Hello and welcome back to the Arcane Forge. My name's Josh, and more importantly, with Halloween rolling in ever closer, welcome back to this whole month of creepy videos that I'm calling Cryptober. In these videos, I'm going to be illustrating and talking about the lore and mythology of various cryptids that my patrons over on Patreon have voted as the ones that they're most excited about seeing. And I'm going to be sharing with you how to include these creatures in your games if there are resources already that allow you to use them in your campaign. Or in the case of today's topic, I'll homebrew some stats which I'll leave below in the description box absolutely for free. Which is fitting because the title of today's video, the topic that I'll be covering, are the not dear. And when something's not dear in the UK, it's usually very cheap. In this case, free. So I hope you enjoy your free monster. I hope you enjoy the lore, my research and my illustration. And if you do, make sure to hit the little like button because that really helps the channel. So let's get started. The not deer are probably my favorite cryptids that we're going to cover this month. Not that the almighty Mothman and Nessie, for example, aren't absolutely incredible cultural icons, but there's something so wonderfully eldritch about the not deer. Not just their appearance, but even their name, the idea that they can not be explained or described as something that, well, they can only be described as something that they're not, is a delightful mystery and immediately conjures an eerie and unsettling atmosphere. For those of you who have never heard of the not deer, then the only way to describe them, as their name suggests, is that on the surface, at a glance, let's say, these creatures are unassuming deer. But there's something incredibly different, intelligent, and unsettlingly alien about them. Some reports suggest that their eyes are just wrong somehow, that they're too intelligent perhaps, that they don't behave correctly, or that they have many, a few too many, or perhaps too few joints in their legs. But these abnormalities only creep into the minds of spectators when they are far away from these creatures. Their encounters are usually brief and fill someone with an unexplainable dread or fear, but for all intents and purposes, these creatures seemingly look like regular deer with something fundamentally wrong about them. Not in a medical sense, but in some more alien, nebulous and creepy way. They're described as appearing as deer, but in short glimpses, in the corner of your eye, in your memories perhaps, in the dreams that haunt you after your encounter with these creatures, you see something more, or at least something else, that you either cannot put into words or cannot bring yourself to acknowledge. Now, I was convinced when I started researching this video that I would be able to cleanly and definitively tell you all that the not deer were created as part of some sort of creepypasta or TikTok trend or maybe a Reddit thread. But the more that I dug, just like the not deer themselves, the more unsettling depth I found in their origins. There are dozens of stories on Reddit and Tumblr claiming to have seen the not deer, and perhaps even more fictional stories written from the perspective of characters who have encountered them. So it makes researching their origins, and indeed attributing a creator for these folklore tales, really difficult. The first place that I personally heard stories of the not deer came from a story on a horror fiction subreddit, the No Sleep subreddit, attributed to an author by the name of user Sowerbot, S-O-W-E-R, bot. But with the name bot in the title, and the comparatively low number of views compared to the vast popularity of this phenomenon, I'm not sure that I'm directing you to the right author. If you happen to know, then make sure to leave their name in the comment section so that I can properly attribute the author, but I'll try and remember to link the story in my description box as well. But it goes like this. I don't know if anyone else in the country has seen something like it, but the area I live has a bunch of not deer. It's not something anyone around here talks about a lot, but when someone calls you in the middle of the night, in hysterics, or shows up on your doorstep with a wild look in their eye, you know what they saw, and they're never quite the same after they've seen it. It's hard to explain exactly what the not deer is. The name isn't very good at telling you much. You just know it when you see it. It'll look like a deer, but only if you don't look closely. If you give it more than a cursory glance, then you start to see how it's not a deer at all. I've collected a few accounts my friends have had about this thing. One of my drinking buddies, who we'll call Tyler, spilled his story over some beers at our favorite little dive. Me and him were sitting with a couple of other friends at the bar. We were all a bunch of 40-something guys who had grown up in rural Appalachia. 
Tyler looked around the bar to see if anyone close to us was going to hear what he said next. He told me that he saw it when he was young, in about his early 20s. Tyler was smart and had gotten into university in a big city. He was driving back to his hometown out in the country for winter break so he could spend Christmas with his folks. He was driving a little slow down a two-lane country road on account of the ice and snow that the area had been getting. He was keeping an eye out for animals since he was driving through the middle of the woods. So he was well prepared for if something like a deer le leaped out of the woods a ways in front of his car. What not enough people understand is that hitting a deer out in the middle of nowhere can be a death sentence. They'll wreck your car. And if it's a buck, then you have the extra danger of the antlers going through the windshield and into places that they're not supposed to be. So it's understandable that Tyler slammed his brakes when he saw the deer. He came to a stop about 20 feet in front of it. Tyler sat there, waiting for the deer to move out of the way. He told me at first it looked like any other normal deer, but he slowly started to realise that something was off about it. Tyler told me that the deer didn't get out of the way immediately. He said that it was wobbling on its legs like a newborn. It took a shaky step forward, and then another, and then it began to walk more confidently until it was out of the way of the truck. As the deer was walking, Tyler realised that what was off about the deer was its legs. I asked him what about them was off. But he just shook his head. I don't know, man, he said. There were either too many bends in them or not enough. It was just wrong. It wasn't made right. Tyler said that as soon as he noticed this, he got more afraid. He said it felt like his heart had sunken into his stomach. After the deer had gotten out of the car's way, it stopped in its tracks. Then its head turned around to face Tyler. It looked smart, Tyler said. It wasn't looking at me, it was looking into me. Tyler put the pedal to the metal, not caring about the ice and snow on the road. He said he kept up at that speed for five minutes. His heart was beating hard against his chest, and he had to take deep breaths to get himself calmed down. After Tyler finished his story, we were all silent. Then one of my other friends, who we'll call Jamie, spoke up. I've never seen it, Jamie said in a voice that made me think he was lying, but my dad has. Jamie said that it happened when he was a teen. His dad was going out to the outhouse in the middle of the night. Jamie's dad brought a flashlight with him so he could see where he was going. He got from the house to the outhouse just fine, but when he was walking from the outhouse back to the house, he shined the flashlight into the nearby tree line. Standing just at the edge of the tree line was a deer. The deer's eyes reflected the light of the flashlight back at Jamie's dad, making it appear as though the deer's eyes were glowing. It's something that happens with all deer and all light, but it can still be really unnerving. The deer ran off after a few seconds. Jamie's dad started walking back towards the house when he heard a rustling in the trees. He shone the flashlight at the tree line again. According to Jamie's dad, there were deer standing about five feet apart from each other, up and down the tree line. They were standing still, just looking at him. Jamie's dad got spooked and booked it back to the house. The next morning, Jamie and his dad had to drive into town for supplies. His dad told Jamie all about what had happened during the drive. But Jamie said, as he told the story, his dad seemed to get more unnerved, more scared. When he got to the part with all the deer standing in line, he paused. You know, something about those deer wasn't right, besides the obvious. Jamie's dad was silent for a bit before he said, It was the eyes. They didn't glow. And the faces, they were just wrong. Didn't look like a deer's. What do you mean? Jamie asked his dad. It was like someone had to make a deer's face from memory, and then you stuck it onto an actual deer's body. Jamie's dad was silent for a while after that. It was only when they pulled into the store in town that Jamie's dad spoke up again. You know, Jamie, I'm starting to think that they weren't deer at all. Once again, our group of friends was silent. We drank our beers for a while. Then Carl spoke up. I got a story. Carl was a laid-back guy. Never really partied. Never complained about his job. He was never really one to strike up a conversation. He was usually the proverbial third wheel in the group. Carl said this happened maybe three years ago. He ran a hardware store in town that had fallen on rough times. He decided to travel into the city to go to a business seminar being given by one of the so-called gurus to try and get his store out of the red. He was driving on a country road towards the city when the deer ran out of the woods and in front of the car. Carl slammed the brakes and was able to stop before he hit the deer. The deer swiveled its head around to face Kyle. Kyle said it was like Tyler said, it wasn't looking at me, it was looking into me. Kyle just sat there, looking at the thing, waiting for it to get a whiff of the smell of the truck, or of him, and run off. But instead, it walked up to the car, it raised its front legs, and 
planted its hooves on the hood of Kyle's truck. The deer just stayed there, towering over Kyle. It looked down at him, staring at him straight into his eyes. Its breathing was real heavy and raspy, Kyle said. It sounded phlegmy too, like it was trying to cough something up. It was terrible. My heart went into my throat. I just felt like something was going to happen if I stayed there, so I did what I had to. Kyle said he pressed down on the accelerator. The deer lost its balance and went under the truck. The truck bucked and rocked as it rolled over the deer's body. Once it was up and over, Kyle slammed on the accelerator and tried to drive away as quickly as he could. As he was driving away, Kyle looked into the rear view. He could see the deer shaking, but it managed to stand back up on its hind legs. If you're ever driving through the eastern part of this country on an isolated road, keep an eye out for those things. They're a part of the forest here, and they won't mess with you if you don't mess with them. Hi, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to take this opportunity to thank my patrons over on Patreon for their support, and without whom this content wouldn't exist, this video wouldn't exist. So thank you to all of you for helping me to create this content, to do the research that it takes to make them, the time it takes to illustrate all of these, record, edit, and so on. But in particular, those of you who have pledged at the Silver Archfey and above have made a massive change in my life. And this month you are Raptor Dio, Duck Quack, Nicholas G. Silva, Jonathan Foster, George Punton, Napping Camo, Yorick Beast, The Smiling Sadist, Amanda and Jake Westfall, Ethan Dibby, Nathan Stratton, Bartle Groth the Great, Braxton Hudson, Cav Manick, Matt Lichtenwalner, Healthy Wolf, Peter Belf, Max Schluter, Darth Katana, Colby Monroe, Styrax, Oliver Thorvald Mellock, Ryan H., Steve Harrison, Max Copeland, Tamaling, Brandon Kerr, Dan Waterman, Dominique Jolly, Sam Hickson, AJ, Christian Palmer Smith, and Aldrin. Thank you so much for taking the time to help me thank those guys, and I hope this didn't take up too much or hinder your enjoyment of the video. With that said, let's get back to it, shall we? JD Sword of the Devil in the Details podcast had similar difficulty to me when looking into the origins of the Not Deer in a recent article for the Skeptical Inquirer, mentioning that while his initial research led him through the miasma of TikTok, he later discovered that there had been sightings not only in this creature's supposed natural habitat of Appalachia, but also, quote, alleged sightings of Not Deer have been reported mostly within Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Connecticut, with some reported sightings as far away as Texas and Norway, end quote. The first time that the title of Not Deer was used to describe this phenomenon seems to have been in a Tumblr post by the user Willow the Witch, a fantastic name, which was posted in 2019, titled, quote, What do you mean by that's not a deer in the mountains near you, end quote. But it was itself inspired by a 2014 4chan post called, quote, Anon Goes Hiking, end quote, by user Carl D135, which was later brought to Reddit in 2019, although the phrase not deer wasn't used to describe these creatures during the story. According to Rowan Bagley of Not Deer Magazine, a cryptid and creepy story site named after our topic for today, the reason for so many real-world sightings of these abominable deer-like cryptids may lie in real scientific phenomenon and a disease which plagues the deer of the region. She states, quote, The lack of fear... Clicking and jerking movements have a scientific explanation. That is, unfortunately, or fortunately, if you're like me and eat this creepy stuff with a spoon, I paraphrase for the YouTube algorithm, no less terrifying. Deer and other members of the deer family, like elk or moose, can be affected by a chronic wasting disease, CWD, an illness similar to mad cow disease, that attacks the central nervous system and causes the animal to become emaciated and eventually die. Symptoms of CWD are stumbling, listlessness, drooling, aggression, and a total lack of fear of people. What's also worth noting is that the deer won't notice or react when other deer show any symptoms of CWD, similarly to how the not deer are described as being part of the herd of deer almost as if those deer don't notice them, that it isn't like them. No one has ever been attacked by a deer suffering from CWD, but encounters with them are unsettling, and it's not difficult to see how they could be mistaken for some kind of deer-like monster, end quote. 
There's a chance that stories of a deer-like creature or creatures impersonating deer with potentially predatory attitudes have been told in the Appalachian region for many hundreds of years though. Some have likened the stories of the not deer to tales of skinwalkers, a type of malevolent witch in Navajo culture which can impersonate or possess animals and walk among them. In the Navajo language, they call these people yi naldushi, a word that I've probably butchered. But it's a phrase that fascinatingly and creepily, rather than skinwalker, literally translates to by means of it, it goes on all fours in English, which is about a thousand times more creepy than the phrase not dear and will definitely influence my art for today's drawing. Speaking of, today's illustration was a peculiar one. I had a lot of different roads that I kind of wanted to go down. I wanted to maybe illustrate a deer, but have the edges kind of blurred, making it difficult to literally hold your attention on, make it difficult to look at. Something which I wanted to include in the homebrew stat block as well, that a bit like a Medusa would perhaps make this thing difficult to stare at, maybe cause fear so long as you were looking at it. But if like a Medusa you can fight this thing without holding its gaze, you might not be subjected to the aura of fear that it produces. The extra dimensional oddness of it, the creepiness, the unsettling feeling of something impersonating a deer reminded me of two things. For a start, it reminded me massively of eldritch ancient things, which is why I chose to make today's monster an aberration. But also it reminded me of mimics, of doppelgangers, of changelings, things that change their shape to appear as something more mundane, which I think ties in to the skinwalker. Skinwalkers can be very mundanely represented in D&D, I suppose, maybe mundanely is the wrong word. For example, if you wanted to play a skinwalker in game, you need to look no further than a druid. And a druid can be absolutely terrifying used in the right hands. An enemy druid, for example, is what I tend to use when I want to use a witch in game to fight my players but an aberration seems more right, and with my adoration of flesh horror and the nature of skinwalkers, I thought would be a really fascinating idea here would be to draw the silhouette of a deer and then draw some sort of bizarre distortion of its body as if a human had decided to lie back, stand on the very tips of its fingers to impersonate hooves, for its neck to crane and grow, to revolve backwards, for its ribcage to be bursting forth at the top and its spine to be running down the centre of this creature, a reverse of a deer. And I wanted it to have a set of decoy eyes. I liked the idea that in one of these stories being recounted, a regular deer's eyes would shine and reflect in a sort of creepy and terrifying way, but the not deer perhaps would not. So hidden amongst its spots that deer tend to have, I decided to use a set of very human eyes above its sort of decoy set, a bit like a ladybird I suppose, where two eye-like spheres that disguise this face more appropriately as a deer are secretly just camouflage. But anyway, I think I've talked quite a lot about the not deer, and I hope I've given you plenty of stuff to work with. You should find down below in my description box a stat block for this creature. I made it very predatory and wolf-like, as a wolf in sheep's clothing, so to speak. And I love the idea of including features about this creature both running on all fours, but also being able to stand up on its hind legs and fight on two. I used a lot of influence from Wendigos and from Hags to create this creature, but fundamentally I wanted to make sure this thing stayed as an aberration, where I think its eerie aura plays best. And hopefully your players will figure out that looking upon this creature is haunting enough to cause them tragic visions and linger with them. So if they can avert their gaze, Perhaps they can survive the wrath of the not deer, an extra dimensional entity learning about us while disguised as the local wildlife. And until next time, happy cryptid hunting. Thank you.